Again, the, both these cars are 2021 models, and those are OEM lights on both. Hey guys, welcome back to Exotic Car DIY. So what's better than one plaid? Two plaids. Actually, got a lot of horsepower in this shop. It's actually pretty cool. So in my last video, I did the matrix headlight conversion on both my plaid and my friend's plaid. But as you can see, I still have the old tail lights. And a lot of people wanted to know, could you do the tail lights? And so me and my friend were actually both talking about this. And then he went and installed matrix tail lights on his car. So these are not the Alpha Rex ones. These are actually the OEM Matrix one's brand new. And we did start with Reed's video. I'll link Reed's video below because I'll give him credit for kind of getting this started. But this video will have more than that because we will show the coding for it and just kind of how we did the door because that is the harp. So the reason the charging door is so hard is because the metal behind here is different. Now this whole piece, the quarter panel is all one piece. It's not that piece, thank goodness. But behind there, there actually is one metal piece that the, uh, that the charging thing receptacle is bolted into. And that is different from the 22 and a half and ups versus the 22 and a half and lowers. And so what happens is to swap out that charging plug requires like sheet metal work and it is borderline impossible. Most people give up. Now the Alpha Rex is a good option, but the problem with the Alpha Rex is they are 12 volt lights and this is a 16 volt car. So they require a really kind of massive resistors. OEM is kind of the way to go, but how do you get around this? So this is actually the factory charger, the factory uh, for the 21 and 22 plaids. So it still opens up just like it does before like this. And this is the door from the other one. So all we really did was we just cut the door here with a Dremel, buffed it so it has a perfect line. It literally looks like it was manufactured that way. And then this one, as you know, is all red on the other cars, this is just a black vinyl wrap. This is just kind of a test to make sure it worked. We're gonna go back and wrap it around the edges and make it look perfect. But then check that out. You have the matrix taillights on there. Okay, so let's go in and get started. Now, first off, I do apologize for this not being my typical start to finish video. This is more of like how we did it. Uh, didn't film it being done to the red car because honestly, we didn't think that it was possible because everybody on the forum said that it was impossible. So this is kind of a supplement to Reed's video. Both of those videos together, you should be able to have everything you need to do it. So in my video, I will show you how to do the interior, how we did the lights, and then the coding that I did at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now you don't need to unplug the battery, but you do want to turn the car off. So we're going to come down here to safety and then just turn the car off. First thing I want to do is access these lights. So we have the trunk open. Pretty easy to get this panel off. Just kind of reach up in here and it literally just kind of pops off. You can actually feel the clips as you go along. With the pull down, there are two connectors we have to undo. You have the trunk close button and the light. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four snaps, and these are just kind of like the push clips along the top. So there's six clips on the bottom here. You just kind of pull them up. You can kind of get your hand underneath them and feel where they are, and then pop them off. Now we can go ahead and remove this piece just by pulling up. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove this trim piece. It comes out pretty easily. Just kind of pull up the rubber, gently kind of pull, and just work your way down. As you get kind of the end, they need to go that way. Now that exposes both the clips here and then two pins you need to pop out. One, two. Undo this pin. Carefully unplug your trunk light. Now there's a clip here and here that you gently need to pry out. Pry out the two clips on this switch. It's actually very easy to remove the buttons from the house just with the two clips right here. So now just with those two panels undone, you get plenty of access to pull back and work in the charging port area. All right, so now it is pretty tight in here. And uh, once again, we are not going to mess with any high voltage stuff. So that orange stuff, no touchy. Uh, but as you can see in this shot, there are some black bolts. We need to loosen all four of those. To do that, we're also going to unplug the tail light. Obviously, access was tight. The three bolts that hold in the tail light, they are eight millimeter. So now you can see we got the tail light kind of in this precarious position. It can't come out 
because the charging door is still attached. Uh, now, now there are three T20 torques that need to be removed in order to remove the tail light from the charging door. They are a bit tedious, so good luck. I have one of these like screwdrivers with a Torx bit on there. The last or lowest torques might be easier to get from outside the vehicle with just a quarter inch ratchet. All right, so we'll start with the easiest ones first. So these lights are 100% plug and play. The holes are in the exact same spot. The plugs are identical. Just take these out and put the new ones in. Now this, you'll have to remove the, uh, the Tesla plaque. There's some clips that has to pop off, but there's also some double-sided tape that you're gonna have to remove and replace when you put the new one in. But uh, so there is another option though. You can actually cut it here and it actually looks 100% legit, at least until you get one of these and then go ahead and do that. So anyway, plug and play, two bolts on the outside and then the two bolts on the inside. All right, so now we'll move on to the passenger side light. So now this one is a lot easier than the driver's side, which we'll discuss here in a second. Basically undo the three bolts that hold this into place and it will remove right out. Now to install the new light, you do need to make new holes essentially to match what a 22 and up car would have come with. The best way we found to find where those holes are is put a little bit of paint on each of the studs and kind of set it into place. And you can actually even look through the hole on the backside and see where you need to do. After you drill the holes, um, uh, you can just uh, touch them up with a little touch-up paint so no corrosion happens and then plug in the light and this one is done and like I said it's basically one two and three and you're done all right so like we saw earlier we did remove this light and so here kind of comes in the problem with this this needs to be bolted into something so got one of the old screws off so this was originally bolted into the tail light in those three holes and so what happens is now there is nothing to hold it into place. So, so what essentially we did is just kind of cut this out around this area enough that this stud still goes into place to hold this assembly in place. And that allows you to put the three screws back in there to hold this in place. So you will have a little bit of your old tail light right here. And then the same way we need to make the hole here, here, and a connector hole here. And then it just goes into place. Uh, we went ahead and waterproofed everything with some tape and that kind of fixes up the tail light into place. Now I realize I oversimplified that. There is one more aspect of it and that is the charging door. So we're gonna leave this one 100% in place, uh, but the charging door from the matrix style, we're actually going to cut the shape like you see out of it. Uh, did that with a Dremel sanded the edges and hit it with a buffer and then it comes out pretty much perfect at the end but then to secure it this side actually clips into the tail light but there's nothing to hold it into place over here so what we did is the little bit of plastic that is still left that we use that's here simply just made little tiny brackets that the plate went into and then screwed into place and it was rock solid when it was done. That does take a little creativity, but that is how it is done. And I think it ends up with a much cleaner look when it's all said and done. So right now we're gonna hop in there and do the coating, and then we're gonna kind of just look at both of them. So let's go and get started. All right, just to kind of refresh you, I did cover this lot in the matrix video, but basically we have the proprietary cable here. Link is in the description, goes to our rad moon. Link is in the description. This needs to start in slave mode. You see it's blinking. And uh, again, you hold that down for three seconds if it's not already in there. The uh, green lights there, one means you're connected to the car, the other one's a computer. So once those are solid, you are good. We're powering it with a USB-C and then our laptop here, which is into toolbox. We do have to hit enable over here. That puts us into gateway unlock service mode. Okay, so now that we got everything set up, so on our computer, we just get connect. Now we've connected to the car. It's gonna be just as easy as it was for the matrix headlights. Go to dashboard. We're gonna scroll down to infotainment dashboard. And over here, we just got all the toggle options. We're gonna go all the way down here to rear light type. Right now we have NA, we're gonna go and hit that. We're gonna change it to global. Time we're gonna to go to rear fog lights installed. Apply changes. It's gonna run the code. It says the routine complete. So you can see it's passed and literally that is it for uh, the coding part of it. So we can go ahead and disconnect. And disconnecting is as easy as um, just unplugging something. So now the coating's been installed. All we need to do over here is just reinstall the software. Now this will just program everything 
that we've done with the current updates on there. Remember, we didn't actually code it to fool the computer. All we did was change the configuration to let it know that it has global headlights instead of regular. Now this process can take up to 10 minutes because uh, it, it's fully reinstalling on all your modules. Okay, so now the software has been reinstalled. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my uh, Rad Moon so it doesn't think we're in diagnostic. And we can go ahead and just exit. And we're back in. Don't want a copyright violation on music. Okay, so under lights, is there a fog light? Say front fog, dome light. On here you can see rear fog. So when we first did this, it actually didn't show rear fog. But when you go to search and you type in fog, it popped up so we knew it was there so we just kind of uh we we're trying to figure out do we do a reset so actually all i did is go to safety i shut the car off with power off we left it off for about 30 seconds turned it back on went over to lights again and sure enough rear fog was there so we now have rear fog and everything in there sweet all right so before it was the amber and the red went so now i've coded global and we get just amber so it's funny, you can actually use these before the coating, but the coating actually makes them work properly. So yeah, uh, before coating, both these lit up. Now just after coating, just that. So here's the uh, old headlight. As you can see, this is with the headlights on and the blinker, so this part does not look. So there's your reverse. With the blinker. We got rear fogs. So that lights up the inner light. We tested on, obviously, on the pre-refresh, and it is not there. So it does come on with the uh, refresh. Sweet. They actually, the rear fogs actually are what's lighting up the garage door right now. So here's a quick example of how the charging port works. There we go. So it works just like it does uh, factory because it is the uh, original charging port. Here's just the running lights with the blinker on on the Matrix. And then here is the running lights only on the pre-matrix. And I'll go ahead and turn on my blinkers. And as you can see, then it uses the, the running lights and the inside to get it. But there is no amber on that. So it is a definite step up. I would say personally, my favorite part about this is we were talking about that this is just black on all the other lights. These kind of have that late 90s Alteza look. If you remember those from all the Hondas. And you can kind of see their clear seam, which is actually kind of like a little unpleasing. It's black here. And actually, this is the other big negative to the Alpharex lights because they use the same kind of seam as these lights, which is very unpleasing, very different than the Matrix lights. But you know what? I don't actually mind these look. I just wish that this was black like it is on the new lights. So I might have something else going on here in the next video. Maybe, maybe I'll keep these and just wrap them black and we'll see if we can get a good look. But anyway, that's how it's done, guys. I think it's an awesome upgrade. All right, and here's kind of the outside look of the pre-refresh lights with the post or the matrix style. Again, the, both of these cars are 2021 models and those are OEM lights on both. Looks pretty good. So, to recap, that would mean that we have Matrix headlights on the 2021s. And then the next thing I should do is we're going to do tilt screen. And then essentially, I don't really don't know what's different other than maybe the steam is the only thing I don't think I can do. They'll both have Matrix headlights, tilt screen. So essentially these are like 22 and a half and ups other than steam. So, so the first thing we're going to do is come over here to service Tesla. Go to diagnostic, diagnostic software. So we're gonna come over and hit daily, purchase, add to cart. So now that we've placed our order, we can actually go to toolbox. Uh, now we're in a toolbox, but we need to do a couple little things. We need to make sure that this page is not secure. We're gonna go over to settings. And then over here, you're gonna see privacy and settings. Under privacy, we're going to go down to site settings. And then under site settings, if you scroll down, additional content settings down here, scroll down, and you'll get to one that says insecure content. Click on insecure content, but you need to add toolbox.com. So basically, that is just the website from Toolbox. So now we need to connect it to the vehicle. It's pretty easy to get in there. You actually don't need to take this off, but it does make it easier. Just lift up near the base thing kind of just slides out of the way okay and then right here there's a panel that we're trying to get uh, basically it's hooked in the back and then there's two snaps we need to pull down uh, you can use a pry tool I actually can get my fingers in there pretty easily 
and it comes out and here's the plug that we need to get to as you can see there's hooks in the back so don't try to pull it down from the back snaps in the front all right so now here in the car we can go and set up our little contraption so we have the rad moon here it has a cable that plugs in here and then a network cable that plugs into your computer so we're going to go ahead and plug this into here and then this is going to go into my computer and then we are powering the rad moon with a usb c when you turn this on i'll do this one more time you actually need to hold down slave plug it in it's going to start up and this is going to put it in a slave mode you're going to get a blinking light here and then we're good to go when both of these lights turn green so we're going to set that down now back on our computer and this may be an extra step some people say it works without doing this but we're going to come over here to ip4 properties and we're going to set up the ip address not automatically but uh manually so use the following ip address again this is in the description we're going to set up a 192 168 90 125 and then 255 255 255 hit okay and it's now time to plug it into the car so we'll go ahead and make the connection here turn the car on so we're going to hit enable you can see as soon as we plugged it in our radmoon went to two solid greens and a blinking slave sorry it's upside down one thing it says in the Radmoon instructions is if you don't have green, you need to hold this down, any of these buttons, for three seconds, and then that'll turn green. Back over to the laptop, and we're going to see if we can actually connect to the car. All right, guys, a little bit of bonus footage. So earlier I said the reason that I think these kind of look bad is basically because they kind of have that 90s Altezza look to it. And basically it kind of comes down to, like I said before, this kind of clear glue line that you can see all around the edge, especially in the sunlight. It makes it look kind of just dated and the new ones are all nice smooth black so I did this in like 20 minutes but I put some and I didn't have gloss black I only have matte black but I wrapped them in uh, this and kind of made the the corner and honestly I'm still on the fence but I do think it looks good I guess just let me know in the comments what you guys think maybe this might be a good alternative because this is a hundred times easier than uh, doing the whole headlight so again there's the matte wrap again that was just a really really quick job and this is what they kind of look like before with this kind of glue line that you see that's just really blatantly obvious. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. More videos to come.